All right, there, singing world. This video will offer Italian pronunciation help for the aria Vittoria Mio Core from the 24 Italian aria book by Giacomo Carissimi. We will explore the tips and tricks to help you sing your aria without accent and also discuss the proper open and closed vowels and other non-phonetic things such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. Before we do that, please direct your attention to the description of this video below. You'll see the text written out with the non-phonetic things, the open vowels, the phrasal doublings, and the assimilation. And there are various links below uh, to my various websites, to my Facebook fan page, and uh, the most important link is to the Italian Pronunciation Dictionary on the RISE site. You may follow the link or type in D-O-P-R-A-I or Rai Dizionario, and you will go there in any search engine. You can type in any word at this site, and it will have a playback button, and it will tell you the proper open and closed E's and O's in the word, and the playback button has a native Italian speaker. Uh, the best thing about it is it acknowledges the existence of non-phonetic Italian, such as phrasal doubling and assimilation. Uh, you'll have whole lines of text spoken back to you by a native Italian. I love the site. It's a tremendous resource. I strongly suggest you check it out. If you do not understand uh, phrasal doubling by the end of this video, you will because you will see it in action in this aria. So first thing you will do is we will read the entire text line by line and then we'll go through a very detailed word by word. So here it is first, the whole thing laid out line by line. You can follow along with the text below. Vittoria mio core, non lagrimar più, è sciolta d'amore, la vil servitù, già l'empia i tuoi danni, fra stuolo di sguardi, con vezzi bugiardi, di spose gli inganni, le frode gli affanni, non hanno più loco del crudo suo foco, è spento l'ardore dal luci ridenti, non esce più strale che piaga mortale, nel petto m'avventi, nel duol né tormenti, io più non mi sfatto e rotto ogni laccio, sparito il timore. So now, that's the whole thing. Uh, so let's go through it word by word, and let's go over every single tip and trick to get rid of your accents. Okay, so we'll go over every word in, in sort of the formulas for each consonant and vowel. And uh, I would like to also examine with you the, t the, uh, the most typical mistakes I hear in either auditions or in a concert. Okay, so the first word, Vittoria. So you notice there are, there are a whole bunch of things. First of all, we have a double T. We have a strong E and then we have a semi-vowel, uh, I, I vowel, I mean, right? So I vowel is E in Italian, right? So Vittoria. So uh, first let's go over how to do double T versus single T. So when I do double T in this word, do I do two T's? That's my question to you. Vittoria. It's not two T's, it's a stop, right? It's a stop, it's a space that makes the double T. Vittoria. So how do we do that? We just stop phonation. It means that there's just a stop, right? So what happens is the vowel before is long, and then we stop phonation, we go up to a T, we don't say the T, and then we say the T that makes the double T, like this, see? So, long vowel, V, stop phonation. V, go up to the T, don't say it. V, Toria. And now we have that double T. Okay, so now, um, T is also is an unvoiced consonant, right? So let's talk about co voiced consonants versus unvoiced consonants and how they're different in English and Italian. So if we were to say an English T or an American T, Vittoria would have air like that to it, right? So we say taste, right, with lots of air. An Italian T is as close to as close to the voice uh, voiced consonant, which would be D. 
right? So D and T, right? So are made with the same. So ta, da, right? They're both made exactly the same. The difference is that the D is made with the vocal cords engaged. Da, vocal cords. Ta, no vocal cords, right? So if we were to find Italian T, it would be just the point at where the T becomes unvoiced, right? So da, ta, exactly where that is, not ta, where it becomes completely unvoiced. Da, ta, vittoria, okay? So there, that's our double T. So you can practice that along with me in this video. Um, so now let's talk about the O. O is a, uh, a non-phonetic vowel in Italian, meaning that you have one printed O and it makes two different sounds, right? So the first sound it could make is the one that is uh, like O and oats. And in this case, it's like A, A-W. So that is made with a broken circle, right, an IPA, A. So this is Vittoria, okay? So A. Okay, so now let's talk about the R. The R is flipped in this word, and R can either roll or it can be flipped. So R's that are surrounded by vowels are flipped. So as in this word, Vittoria, ria, okay, not r, not Vittoria, Vittoria, no, Vittoria. So flipped R. Now an R that touches a consonant, if you look at the next line, you have lagrimar più. Both of those R's touch consonants, so they're rolled. So that's the, the rule. The rule for R, you roll it if it touches a consonant, you flip it if it's surrounded by vowels. Now the vowel E is a phonetic vowel. I, right, is our I. E is the vowel E, right? Vittoria. Now, in this case, the second one is called a semi-vowel. The first one is a, is a strong, pure vowel. Vi-to-ria. So the second one glides, so that's a semi-vowel. Okay, a, the a is always a. It never harmonizes. We tend to go um, America, and we neutralize. A at the end is always a. All right, let's go on. Mio is a possessive pronoun, meaning my, right? Mio or mine. Mio, so it has a strong E vowel and a secondary vowel, O. Now, this O is a closed O. So it's Mio, right? So notice that O is also pure. When we say, if we said it with a really strong American accent, our mouth would move, right? So it would be Mio and would have a, a lot of motion. Their O is just O. So wherever you start is where you finish. That makes your vowel clear or and pure, right? O. O. If we move, we lose it. Okay, so next word, core. So core is an open O and a closed E. So now E is our other non-phonetic vowel that we have not met yet. So E is pronounced either as A, as in hey, or a, as in head. And both, again, are pure. They're, they're not with the glide. In English, we say head, and we close our mouth as we say a vowel, right? They would say head, right? One thing, right? And a, right? One a. So this word, core, notice that the R is flipped as it's surrounded by vowels. The C is hard. C-O is hard. Ca, right? Ca, it makes a K sound, the hard. For it to be cha, it would have to have an I. And that's what's called a disappearing semivowel, right? So cha, cho, or cha would be C I O. Ca, Let's go on. N O N is closed. Non, non. So, non lagrimar. So, here we have our first uh, A, right? That cannot be neutralized. So it's a at the beginning of the word and a at the end of the word. Lagrimar. So there we have the two rolled R's in a in a. Now, you can do what I call a purity test where you, you check the purity of your vowels, right? So if you just said vowels in this word, you could say a, e, a. Now, it should feel exactly the same when the R's come back in. Lagrimar. 
So, so that's your purity test. What we tend to do in English is we let an R harmonize the vowel because that's what we do. We say car, right? And the R bleeds into the vowel. The, the, the R actually takes the vowel over very slowly. That does not happen in Italian. La, gri, ma, r is what really happens. And then we just connect those. Okay, going on. Pew. So uh, the I in this word is a semi-vowel, like a Y, right? Pew. But how is a Y formed in Italian? First of all, the, the letter Y does not exist in the Italian alphabet, right? Uh, this, is, this I is actually from the I position, the E position. So if you were to practice this word slowly, you wouldn't sing it this way. If you practice E, U, 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 P, U. So it's way up here. Notice that we, if we say yellow or yolk, right, or yawn, we're way down here. If we were to say yawn with an Italian accent, it would be yawn, yawn, right? You see, it's way up there. So all of these words with semi-vowels come from an E position, and that's a very good way to get yourself up in the high position and, and bright on, on, on your, your Italian, to get, to get rid of your accent. Okay, going on. Ah, so here we have an open E, and they this is how we, we, we mark an open E, it was with the rounded edge E, right? So there are two one-syllable words that are written with E. One of them means and, and one of them means is. This is the one that means is, ah, and we know it's is because it's open E, ah. So the word a is means and. Okay. Now, the other thing about both of these words is that they're both known as strong monosyllables. So a strong monosyllable is a monosyllable that causes the next word, if it starts with a consonant, to have a double consonant. And if you've noticed, I've written out sholta with a double consonant. So I could say a sholta, or I could say a sholta double consonant. So you see the sh just becomes stronger. Because the a ah is there. It's the word a ah that affects the next word. That's why that's double. Okay, going on. Uh, S-C-I is she. S-C-I-O is shaw. So it's a soft. It's the I that makes the S-C uh, weak or soft. Right? Uh, Shalta. Shalta. So now we have an open O in the middle of the word on the stress. Shalta. And note the L. What happens with the L? It sings more. So in English, we would say shalta, right down here. In Italian, you say shalta. Lta. So L's that touch a consonant tend to double, and they get held in phonation. So whatever the pitch is that you're singing, or the note that you're singing, the L will actually sing on that note for an instant before moving on to the T. Let's go on. D'amore. So here we have a flipped R because it's surrounded by vowels. The O and the E are closed. D'amore. Okay. O, A. Here's our purity test. O, A. D'amore. Now, common mistakes in this word I hear. Well, first of all, people roll the R, right? Amore, wrong, right? Amore, here's another mistake. I made a double M. So let's now talk about, we already talked a little bit, we touched about double L. Let's talk about double M, right? Double M, how do we make double M versus single M? All I have to do to make double M is hold my lips together while I phonate. Amore. Double M. Not desirable in this word. Amore. Amore. To get rid of double M, I don't allow my lips to hum for even a second, right? Amore. So that's that's easy, right? Now, if you still having problems, the other way to do it is just practice the vowels, right? The really generous vowels. Aoe. Aoe. Now memorize that feeling. Aoe. Now, when you put the consonants back in, the, the uninterruptedness of those vowels should feel exactly the same. Amore. 
If you go mmm for just a second, double M. Amore, no? Amore. There we are. Okay? So I hope that clears it up. A lot of mistakes I hear are double consonants in the wrong place. We, we tend to be okay at double consonants, but con doing the ones that are single sometimes trip us up. Let's go on. La. So L-A is the word the. Uh, and it is a weak monosyllable. So some monosyllables do not double the next consonant, right? So it is easy to, easier to memorize the weak monosyllables than to memorize the strong ones. Uh, the weak ones are only on two hands. There is a list of these in a book. It's called Singer's Italian by Evelina Colorni. It's a green book. A lot of people had it in diction class. Um, if you flip to the last five pages, she lists all of the strong monosyllables and all of the weak monosyllables and all uh, all of the two-syllable words like dove, contra, sopra that cause a phrasal doubling. So la, in this case, does not cause a double V. And uh, if it were la over there and we have an accent on it, that that makes it la over there, like la dove, that would be a double, that would be a doubling word. Okay, so vil. V I L E is always I is always E. Uh, so now here's a good word for the R to not harmonize the E, right? So the first, if you notice, the first E is closed. A servitu. Notice that the accent is on the last syllable. This is not common in Italian. In Italian, the, the second to last syllable is usually accented. Well, this word was servitu de originally. You see, so it did follow the accent, they've truncated the day on this word, and two is left, so they put the accent there to tell you that that word is truncated. Um, the E is in an unstressed position, and it is A. Servitu. Okay, so the R will roll. The most common mistake in this word is that it rhymes with chair, the first of all. Servitu, right? Servitu. Se a Servitu. So that's how you, you uh, check. The word ja is a strong monosyllable. Ja. Notice that I started from the E position, right? You can practice. Gia. Now, you would never separate the E from the A ah like that. This is a disappearing semivowel, right? It's just there to make a Y, right? E ja. Ja. But you see, when I go fast, I'm from that high position. I'm not from the yellow position. Ja. Ja. Okay. So we said that this makes a double L. We make a double L. The word limpia. So this word actually has two double consonants. The M is also going to double and the L is going to double. So the L, first of all, we double it by holding it in phonation. L. Jalempia. Notice the closed E at the beginning, right? And I've underlined anything that we tend to open, right? We, as Americans, we say empia. Empia, right? So, empia. Notice that the I is also a semivowel, right? It's not a disappearing one, it's there. Pia. Empia. Not like ja. That's how that disappears. Jalempia. Going on. A. Double T, another strong monosyllable. Atuai. So this word does not rhyme with boy in English. I hear all the time, toy. No, it's, let's break it apart. It's U, A, E. Purity test, right? U, A, E. Uai. Tuai. And that's how we say the word perfectly. Notice in Italian, you say every vowel you see, even if it's a semi-vowel. You technically say it. Uai. Now, this, this word has two semi-vowels. The U is a semi-vowel, and the I is a semi-vowel. Let's go on. Danni. Notice that I said two N's, right? Mm. Danni. Okay, let's go on. Fra. This R rolls in this word because it's a strong monosyllable. It also causes a phrasal doubling. It's a strong monosyllable. So notice that the S doubles. Stualo. So we have an open O. Most words in Italian that have U O are going to open. 
Okay, stuolo. On a stress, right? Stuolo. Now, the danger in this as Americans is when we open a vowel on a stress and we have a single consonant, we tend to double the consonant, right? So you'll hear a lot, stuolo. That's your typical mistake. Stuolo. Stuolo. Again, you buy, you make the, the uh, you don't let the L to hold in phonation. You, you do generous vowels. Okay, going on. D-I is a weak monosyllable of. The word that has an accent is D-I. It means day. Poetic day. Nobody says it anymore. The modern word is giorno. Right? So don't go around saying buon di to somebody in Italy. You'll get laughed at. D-I is with the accent. That's a doubling word. But this word, meaning of, is a weak monosyllable. So di sguardi. Right? Sguardi. Z Right? That's your first sound you make in that word. Sguardi. R rolls because it touches the D. Uh, here we have an assimilation. Right? And you heard me talking about this in the, uh, in the, uh, on the word C-O-N. Right? You heard me talking about this in the introduction. Okay. So, N's do whatever the next consonant are going to do. They assimilate into it. And we're going to show you how. If I were to say these two words together, Convezzi, convezzi, watch my N, it goes on my bottom lip, convezzi. Now, let's break that down. What exactly happened? I'm going to say V, right? With the, when I say a V, my bottom lip touches my top teeth. That's how you make a V. It's a fricative. Also, Fs. So if I say frando, right, F, same thing. Both of those are fricatives, bottom lip touching the top teeth. What happens is the N in speech goes right there. Confranto. Uh, and it goes by so fast, Italians don't even know they're doing it, right? So, convezzi. There, there it goes by fast, right? So, what usually happens, Americans sing, or somebody reads and becomes a little bit too visual, and says, ah, oh, there's an N there, right? So I'm going to make an N, right? Even an Italian will do this. And so you say, convezzi. And what happens? You have a shadow vowel. How does that happen? Well, you try to make legato. You make the N with the tip of your tongue on the ridge behind your top teeth. Now, to get out to the V, you have to release the tongue while you're trying to sing legato. And you make a vowel like this. Con and see what happens? Convezzi. You've lost your legato. You're off the track. If I did slow motion, what actually happens when somebody doesn't think about it and it's just in speech, it's convezzi. See? Just there. The end disappears. So when you do it right, it goes by. It's these legato. Okay? So, now, there's another way to do it. You do it right, and you actually double the assimilation, and it will sound wrong. It will sound exaggerated. It will sound vulgar, like this. Con... And if you linger like that on it, you're going to get called out. Somebody says, hey, well, that's weird, right? You're actually doing it right. You've just doubled it. Convezzi. You can't call attention. Convezzi. Just like that. Convezzi. And it goes by... And, and that's it. Notice that the E is closed. Vezzi. Right? And also notice that E's, closed E's and closed open E's are not that far apart. Right? A, 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 A. It's not A and A. Uh, right? So they're not that far. One is A and one is A. Right? So Vezzi. Let's go on. Bugiardi. Lies. Right? Great word. Bujardi. So the R rolls. Notice that the I is there just to make the G instead of ga, ja. Right? So GA is ga, GIA is ja. The I softens. Right? Bujardi. Okay. Going on. Di spose. So now here's a good time to talk about stressed vowels and unstressed vowels, right? You're probably wondering, how do I make sense of these E's and O's that are open and closed? Do I have to memorize everything, right? What's the, that's the question always I hear. Well, 
here the, here's the good news. You have a stress of a vowel, right? So you have a stress of a of a syllable in Italian, right? So in this word, let's take the spause. The accent is on spause, right? So all of the unaccented syllables are going to have closed vowels. That's the good news. You have you don't have to memorize any of those. So we know that there's there's an e on the last syllable. It's on an unaccented syllable that is going to be a. If there were an o on one of those unstressed syllables, it would be closed. Okay, hundred percent, no exceptions, always closed. Now the stress of the word can either be open or closed. In going back through this, you've noticed we've had stress vowels that are closed, as in amore. We've had stress vowels that are open, core, sciolta, right? So stress vowels can either be open or closed and the bad news is you have to memorize the stress vowels so best way is to go in your score and only mark open vowels because they're not phonetic everything else you can leave because they're exactly as written in IPA okay so in this word you would mark the O open and you would leave the E alone because the E would be A and the O would be A di spose okay so there's your rule. Stress vowels can either be open or closed. Unstressed, 100% closed. Okay? Um, there's one more thing we need to talk about in this word, and that is the S. Now, too much S in the theater is ugly, right? And um, when you sing. So, when you speak, you could say it like this. Dispose. Notice that I'm hissing those S's. And it doesn't matter. It's nice. It's crisp. Dispose. When I sing, if I did it in slow motion, I have to separate those S's and make sure they're completely on the next note. So, dispose. Dispose. Notice. Now, so if I did it fast, dispose. Or legato. You see? The S is completely on the next note. So, if I have three notes, the first note is D. Second note is spa. It's the first note is not these. That's my point. When I speak, the first note is these spas. You see, there's s on the first syllable. Not when I sing. That's the difference. Lyric diction versus spoken. Going on. Lingani. So you have g l i, which is the same as if the word were not contracted, right? So Let's go over how we do this. G L I in Italian is like Y preceded by L. So L Y. So if I do it backwards, this is how we practice to get really, really proficient at this is Y. You do Y I with a strong Y. Now precede that with a phonated L. L to be a tongue. I know I realize this is like I'm a crazy person right now, but this is all how we do it very exaggerated, right? First, because you have to do it really fast and it has to be that intense, right? So, this is one of the hardest words to do right while you sing in the allotted time. Let's go over the ends. The first end touches a G. So these ends are in two different positions. Did you realize that? Think about this. Where, what part of the tongue do you use to say ga? It's the middle, right? Ga. So there's another N assimilation. The N is going to be formed in the first syllable of this word with the middle of the tongue. Ing, not ingani, but ingani. And then it's going to be formed for the double N with the tip of the tongue. So, middle of the tongue, tip of the tongue. Ingani. Lingani. You're going to get sore, right? Because we don't speak like this. I spend the whole day in the studio coaching Italian, and I speak English all day, right? Uh, this is a different part, so it's sort of like, you know, if you ran a couple miles, you'd be sore. Your flesh in your face is what's sore, not your vocal cords, but your flesh. Right, your palate. Just because we're, you're going to be, you need to be moving in a different motion, right? So lingani, 
right? And that was hyperbole, of course, right? You're not going to be sore. You're just going to feel different parts of your face moving, right? Uh, let's go on. Le frode. So le is a, is a weak monosyllable. L-E is closed E. Now, here we have a stressed O. And then notice that the unstressed is always going to be closed. So the E is closed. The stressed O is open. The R rolls because it touches a consonant. Here's another L E. We're good. We practiced it already. We did it. Last line. Okay, so now we have a funny. Double F. A funny. A funny. Not a funny. Not stop. See, so double F, double V, double B, they do not stop phonation, right? Not Bobino, but Bobino, right? Uh, Avi, not Avi, right? We're not going to stop. Like we say tutto when we do double T or Vittoria, right? We're going to keep going. Ah, funny. Okay, going on. N-O-N is closed non right the word no and o in italian is open not so non not so known is like not so it negates n o is just the word not anno okay so anno means anus so please if you do nothing else right in this aria please double the n anno that means they do not have. No, no, no. They do not have. Right? Uh, pew is a strong monosyllable ending in an accent. Pew. So notice that I've doubled the L. Now, here's a good word. Loco. Single C. Single K. Right? Closed O at the end. Open O. Right? So Italians will not harmonize this word. The O will be open. The stress the unstress will be closed. Loco. Notice again the we will tend to do a double K, loco, if we open the vowel, right? So that, that takes good practice, right? Loco. Let's go on. D-E-L. Del. Closed. E. Del is a computer company. Del is this word. Crudo. Rolled R. Touches the touches the K, right? Suo, so words that are possessive pronouns usually have a strong first vowel and a weak second vowel. So mio, suo, sua, mia, fuoco. So this is a uh, fire, fuoco. This is the old form of it. It's also a more modern Italian, fuoco, and it, it follows the u o where the u opens, right? So fuoco. Uh, now we have a word that gives us a choice. There are a few words that can be pronounced either open or closed. And spento can either be pronounced spento or spento. Spento is the more uh, common one today. Notice that the a, eh, the word that means is, is a phrasal doubling word. Lardore. So here's a good word for purity test because there's an R. So practice a, o, a, a, o, e, then you do a legato, a, o, e, lardore, and then it should be perfect. D, A, da, is a, is a strong monosyllable, so notice I've doubled the L, galuci, uh, ridenti, anything that's a gerund, I, N, I, N, G in Italian, right, like doing something, the N, T is, is going to be open E, so ridenti. Notice that the R at the beginning of this word is surrounded by vowels by, because of what precedes it. So it will flip. Esce. So we had known already, so we're going to do esce. Now, notice that any word that has a sh in it is considered a double consonant, and it's pretty strong. Esce. So the, here's the difference. Is when I speak, again, I could say esce. When I sing, I have to say esce. And when I do that, when I do that uh, legato, it's just fast. Esce. But there's not esce. Nothing's on that first syllable. Pew, we've had. Notice that you have a double S for strale. 
K is also a strong monosyllable. So K piaga. K piaga. So double P. Um, the next is a mortale. So the word morto is open, but mortale is closed because the O goes into the unstressed position. Notice again the R is rolled because it touches a T. N E L is nail, not nel. Petto. This is another dangerous word because this word petto means breast or chest, but with a single T it means fart. So petto is fart. Right, so you want to double the T in this word. Petto. Maventi is a double V. All of a sudden now my fan on my laptop is starting to act up. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, Maventi. So we have a, an open E in this word. Double V. Uh, nel dual. So dualo is the word for pain. And it's an open O. It follows the U opening the O. Dual. Uh, tormenti. Is it too close, those? Notice that the R rolls. Tormenti. So, a lot of words that are nouns that have E N T O or E N T I have a closed E. Tormenti. Io is the word for I. And usually you'll see that over one note and you have to sing two notes. Io. Uh, we've had pu. We've had n-o-n. But now we have a different thing happening. We have another assimilation. Here's an n that before an m assimilation. So if you notice, I've written it out with sort of an m symbol. So what happens is, when I say this, I say pu non mi sfaccio. We'll just watch the non and the mi, right? Non mi. So what happens? No mi sfaccio. I'm going to say me with my lips together. Me. My lips are together. The N will assimilate to the lips. No mi sfaccio. Did you notice that? The N just disappeared into the M. Right? So again, the same things can happen. I can make the N in my mouth and have a shadow vowel like this. No mi sfaccio. Not as good, right? And I can also call attention to it by doubling it. No mi sfaccio. You don't want that one either, right? That's technically right, but you call attention. The best one is that it just assimilates. No mi sfaccio. So notice sfaccio. There's a double ch. And again, it's just like following the T in Vittoria. We go up to it, we don't say it, and then we say it. Sfaccio. That's how we make the double ch. We do not cut the ah uh, short like this. Svatcho. I hear that a lot. That's the mistake. Svatcho. So you have no vowel on the first note. You cannot phonate. You cannot have any voice on that if you sing that way. Svatcho. So when we speak again, the difference between lyric Italian and spoken Italian is that we can cut that short in speech. Svatcho. You see? But when you sing, you have to elongate the ah. Uh. Svatcho. Okay, going on. Eh, we've had. We know that this is a strong monosyllable. Now, look at what it does to R. Normally, R would be surrounded by vowels. and would be flipped. But in this case, it doubles. And also notice that the O is closed on the stressed, right? How many people do this right? So this is erotto. Erotto nilaccio. Notice that the O is allied also, right? So, erotto nilaccio. G-N-I is like lasagna, right? The word lasagne, lasagna. So, it's an N with a Y after it. Ogni, yi, right? So, again, the second part is yi, and then you phonate an N before it. Ogni, and that's how you get both parts. La. Cho rhymes with sfaccio with a nice long a ah before you stop phonation, go up to the ch and don't say it. Sparito. Okay, lipped R, single T. Right? Uh, or you can hear a lot of times this wrong. Sparito. That's how Americans tend to do it. Right? Sparito.
Sparito wrong, right? Sparito. Single T, single R. I L ill, right? So now we have a word that ends with a consonant and L. We're gonna anticipate the next T. Il timore. Notice that ore is closed. It's not harmonized like ore. Il timore. O o. Il timore. Okay, so let's read through our text one more time through and then we, we, we will finish up this video. So let's do the whole thing uh, line by line, finding our rhymes. Here we go. Vittoria mio core, non lagrimar più, è sciolta d'amore, la vil servitù, già lempia tuoi danni. Frastuolo di sguardi, con vezzi bugiardi, di spose gli inganni, le frode e gli affanni, non hanno più loco del crudo suo fuoco, è spento l'ardore da luci ridenti, non esce più strale, che piaga mortale, nel petto m'avventi, nel duol ne tormenti. Io più non mi sfaccio, è rotto ogni laccio, sparito il timore. Thank you very much for watching and for going along with, uh, with this video and following me on Facebook. Thank you. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, please like, please comment. Uh, I love to hear your comments and your suggestions and requests for other videos. And as always, don't forget to see your coach and we'll see you at the opera.